What is good, YouTube? This your boy, Aaron. It's Brian Salute. And this is the Courtside View Podcast. And today, make sure to like, subscribe, comment down below, hit the notification bell, follow the socials as well, because we post up on social media. And let's continue. Now, today, we got a lot to talk about. First, I want to get to college basketball. March Madness, as we all know, it's, it started on um, really on Thursday. And now we're here Saturday, and a lot has transpired. I want to really get to the biggest news of it all and that is Kentucky getting upset um Oakland Oakland yeah. Oakland uh, Oakland from Michigan, Michigan. by the way <laughs> not 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 Oakland from California so big surprise wasn't expecting that Calipari loses again in the first round are yeah That's um doing. yeah i have this i have this graphic real quick but Calipari has, as we all know, these past four years, he his teams have just been just bad. Like, they have fallen out of it, for real, for real. And he hasn't, he hasn't gotten it done. You know, normally in the past, he's been okay-ish. 2015, he had that remarkable team. They, they weren't able to get it done. They, they reached the Final Four, but they weren't able to win it. In 2012, he had Anthony Davis, as we all know. He was able to win a national championship. But after that, what has he really done? I mean, he's gone to the lead A, he's gone to the Final Four, but he hasn't gotten it done. And if I could find this graphic, I know I have it. it. Didn't they say he only got out of the first round once in four years or something like that? Yeah, 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 yeah. I, it, it, it is. He, he hasn't. Um, yeah, he has like one win. That's terrible. In four years. With that kind of program, I know, that's unacceptable. I know, that kind of program. All right, so here, here, here's the graphic. All right, I'll show you guys. You'll be able to see it. But the graphic is, so Calipari's record these past four years. One year, obviously pandemic, so he didn't make the tournament, but they were still really bad. His record these past four years, 80 wins, 46 losses. Three NCAA tournament trips, one win. 23 top 100 players, 15 NBA players. Mm. Now, let's compare Calipari to another coach's resume these past four full years because he got fired during his last year in the middle of the season. This coach had 83 wins to 45 losses. This coach made the tournament twice, one year because of the pandemic, but they were still actually really good. Two... NCAA tournament wins. Two. 14 top 100 players compared to Calipari's 23. Four NBA players were drafted compared to Calipari's 15. Guess who that coach is? What what school did he coach for? <sighs> would that be too much of a giveaway? Yeah, it would be. I don't know. Who is it? Mark Turgeon. Oh. University of Maryland. <laughs> so... Mark Turgeon has more wins, regular season wins. He has one less tournament appearance. 14 top 100 players to Calipari's 23. He has one more tournament win than Calipari. And he has 11 less NBA players. Players that were drafted in the NBA. And yet Calipari can keep his job. I don't. I don't get that. That that makes no sense to me. W what is your reaction to hearing those stats? Um, I'm not college basketball guy. Well, at least for the men's division, I watch more of the women's uh, college ball. But after hearing them type of things, I, I, and then did they give him a con a lifetime yeah, contract? A lifetime? Are you kidding? So me? if they buy him out, they'll have to give him around like thirty three million. Which for them, they I mean, they that. can afford it. They, I mean, the boosters and all the other stuff. Come they ain't on now. To pay that, pay that money, thirty-three mil up front, or are they gonna have to break that down over time? Because if it's up front, I'm like, Ugh. that's that's how much NBA players getting paid. I think it may be up front. If they buy him out, they're gonna have oh, to pay him thirty-three. Well, ski mask Hall of Fame. <laughs> yeah, because that's that. But seriously, with a program like that, and you just consistently fold and fail mm -hmm. in the first round? Yeah, in the first round, right? At least Turgeon, he was able to get, like, those past two, 
he was able to get a tournament. At least he made it to the second round. He he won one. Exactly. That's unacceptable, especially with all the talent. 15 NBA players. Yeah. 23 top That's 100 players. That's a whole roster of NBA players. Yeah. 15 NBA players in the past four years. Yeah. That's crazy. And they're saying, yes. oh, the talent, the talent, he doesn't have the same amount of that. But he gets like four or five, he has four or five top 100 players on his roster every year. What do you mean he doesn't have any talent? I, I saw I saw some someone said, Oh, if you look at the roster this year, it's no it's just a regular SEC team. But I'm like, you still gotta win. You you're, you're playing a sixteen seed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You let dude who look like he's about to be stocking shelves at Costco come out there and drop thirty something points mm-hmm. off three pointers. Mm-hmm. Off three pointers, yeah, you're right. <laughs> I mean, we we can't keep giving excuses. We can't keep giving these dudes a pass. If no. I was a Kentucky fan, I'd be heated. I would be too. Like, what's like, what's the point of watching the regular season if you know he's going to fold when it matters most, which is the tournament? Well, I'm a Cowboys fan. You shouldn't ask me. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but at least it's like a 17 week season. This is like over 30 something games. You watching over 30 something games, and then you have the SEC tournament. Then you have this tournament, and all of a sudden you just fold every single year. Like it's, it just doesn't it doesn't add up. It's like what's the point? What's the point of this is this is the problem with college basketball because what's the point of the journey when at the end you know that the team that you're rooting for is gonna fold regardless? What's the point of the journey? That's not that's not fun. You you know they always say it's not about the end it's about you know it's about the journey. Mm-hmm. Well, the journey if I know the ending it's like WWE it's like with Roman Reigns and and his reign. Like if I know that the dude is going to win, then how much fun is the journey? There's no fun. And if I know that the team is going to lose, if I know that the team is not going to do anything when it matters in the tournament, then what's the point of me? Watching their games in the regular season because I know they're going to fold when it matters most. There is no point. Exactly. That's why I don't get invested in college basketball. Exactly. In terms of men's, in terms of men's college basketball, yeah. it's very hard to watch, especially when the players are. That's a, that's another conversation. But in terms of like, you look at the NBA versus college and how it's it's totally different from a talent perspective and the way that they play, the play style, and all the other stuff. While in college football. It mirrors itself, you know, a lot in terms of just the way that they play, in terms of the talent level. But that's a different. That we're talking about Calipari. I just think that they need to move on. There's there's a time where a coach has overstayed his welcome. I think Calipari has overstayed his welcome unless he is able to change things. If he's not able to adapt to the times, if he's not able to change his ways, then what's the point of having him? Seriously. It's it's the same old, same old. Like it's just how long how long can you continue to do the same stuff? You know, it's it's uh it's insanity at this point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean you're gonna have to pay it up that thirty three cause uh yeah. Oh well. It's time to go. Oh well. Hey, hey. I know. I know. I know. People are gonna say, "Well, who are you gonna replace him with?" Well, damn. I mean, you gotta try something. You gotta. You you're losing in the first round every year. You gotta try something. So, all right. Let's go to the next topic. I want to go to. I want to talk about LeBron's podcast, man. Like I was very impressed. Mind of the Game podcast with J.J. Reddick. I watched the entire episode, episode one. I'm not going to lie. Like, he put a lot of people on notice. This this podcast really put a lot of people on notice, really is um, going to expose a lot of people. A lot of people that say they know basketball. Well, you can tell that. You can tell what. Real basketball heads and how they talk, and then people that try to imitate it. I'm not going to name names, but there's an account on Twitter that talks about, that believes that he knows what he's talking about, but when it comes to the X's and O's, 
that's a different story. And so, um, yeah. Does the does the name rhyme with call don't drop? Oh man, <laughs> I'm not gonna say anything. Uh, I'm not gonna say anything. All I'm gonna say is is that. It's a few accounts. You can, like that there are a few thing. accounts. There are a few accounts, but we know. But we we can tell what real ball knowers and and no and ball knowers that th- well people that think they're ball knowers that like to imitate it that like to believe that they are one. But anywho, regardless, this podcast episode. What what is what was your thoughts of the episode? I didn't watch the one. You didn't watch the episode. Why? You uh, you just hate LeBron so no, much. No, you no, can't no. stomach see, see, it. See, at first, I didn't know when it fully when the full episode released. And also, did they have graphics on the? They did. They actually oh, they did. did. Yeah. They st- okay. So yeah. the clips I seen, I didn't see like any graphics. So I was like, oh, maybe I would watch it when they incorporated into the pop. But I didn't know they did it episode one because mm. the way Braun worded the tweet, I was like, so are they going to do it in a later mm-hmm. episode or? No, I ain't watch it. I, I guess I'm gonna watch it. Oh man. I only see I saw like two clips, maybe three or four. I saw the one clip they was talking about the. The way to guard that um that the that blob the inbound in, play yeah. the inbound play yeah I saw that one I saw the one he was talking about Jason Tatum yeah I saw the one where he was talking about how Steph Curry changed the game mm-hmm. and another clip I can't remember the name of I'll tell you this first of all off rip like I remember in the group chat we were go- we were arguing about uh Drake May versus Jaden Daniels. And um, I was like, my question with Drake May was, uh, can he can he process stuff quickly and can he read your defense? And one person's like, what do you mean by process? Like, there's there's certain points where a person that I will not name or another person they'll try to act dense, like they don't know what I'm talking about. And, but. Then I found a clip of LeBron on the podcast talk about processing information. So I thought it was very funny. He was talking about how like he he um, his coaches would tell him like he processed information very quickly and stuff, and like he has this rare ability to processing information very quickly and able to change a play. Like if he needs to change the play, if he needs to switch the play, yeah, he thought, can do that at like thought, age eight. Oh no, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. What were you gonna I say? I just thought like processing information was pretty self-explanatory. Like, can you understand what you're seeing? Like, that's literally what process information is. Like, understand what you're seeing. Also, I think another thing is, if I'm telling you this, do you understand what I'm saying and can you memorize it? So, like, if I'm telling you a play, you know how long them, them freaking football players are. Yeah. Can you, okay, can you understand it? Can you memorize it? And then can you also, when you get in the huddle, can you repeat what I'm saying to the players in the huddle? And that's that's one of the things. And also when it comes to, like you said, um, when you're in the line and you're looking at the different coverages and everything like that, can you like, okay, can you understand like, okay, this is what they're doing, yada, yada, yada. Like, and I'm just like, come on, man. Like, how, how, how do you not understand that? But anywho, uh, yeah, so when LeBron said that, I was like, ooh, let me, let me, let me uh, timestamp that and go, yeah, record that real quick. I sent to the group chat. Nobody responded. I knew it because <laughs> obviously he, he, he. He looked dumb, but anywho, uh, but yeah, the the whole podcast was very educational. Um, they they just broke down everything. I thought LeBron's explanation when it comes to discipline, when it comes to um, how do you define what a great player is, when it comes to uh, just different different things when it, when when the love of the game, all this other stuff. It's not new. A lot of stuff is not new, but it's great to see him talk about it. Him speak about it because now there's no excuse. There's no oh um, well this person said this, but I'm not gonna listen because this person said it's not the message. It's the messenger. You you heard that saying before. It's not the message. It's the messenger, and the messenger is arguably the greatest of all time. So, well you don't you, well you know it's uh, people say it's not what you say. It's how you say yeah. it. But it's also who who you are to the person you're saying it to, and also how you say it, because you could be like like I said, it comes it's, it comes, it means a more, it means a little more coming from LeBron because yeah, well credibility. this is like a top two player of all time yeah credibility I mean anybody yeah. could say the stuff but you know it means a little more because of who he is to the basketball yeah. world so mm-hmm. yeah man 
He that's said, why I was surprised yeah. to see. I was like, LeBron with a podcast with JJ. Right? <laughs> that's, that, that just came out of nowhere. I know. It did. It literally did. It just boom. Did, did, did they say is it going to be like a week-to-week basis? Um, They didn't. I think it may be. might be like an episode a week or something. I know they filmed two episodes uh, like a week or two ago, and there, there's going to be another one coming out um, very soon. So it might might see one once every week. I hope he does this uh, more than the shop. Yeah. Because the shop, oh my God. Like it was a good concept originally, but then all of a sudden they went to, uh, I don't know, it was Showtime, and then they edited everything out, and it was just like, ah, and then they went back to YouTube, and it was like, okay, I mean, it's all right, but then LeBron's not there sometimes. I'm just like, all right, bro. Like it was, it was good in concept. It was it was good originally. Like back, remember they started bringing all these different celebrities that ain't got nothing to contribute. Really, mm-hmm. it was like, okay, what are we doing? Here? Like remember, remember when the idea was because it was during All Star break, and they went to a barber shop. I believe it may have been in New Orleans, and there was like an hour conversation and like ESPN filmed and everything like oh. that. I remember I remember like it was yesterday and I was like, damn, this is a great convo. And they had all these different people that like maybe comedians and athletes and everything like that. And they were just talking about it, and that's where the idea came from. But I think it's overstated as welcome. I think that this podcast is where LeBron should sort of focus us because it's really cool to see somebody of his stature talk to talk about the game this way. The one thing that really confused me, he was like the pick picker. I'm like, what the hell are you? The pick picker. I kind of knew what he was talking about, but I'm like, the pick picker. I ain't never heard of that. I ain't never heard like pick picker. Like just, just say the person that's setting the screen. Oh, that's what he meant. Yeah, man. Oh. Like he said, the pick picker. I'm like, what the hell? Because I knew what they were talking about with the inbound play. I was like, okay, I can follow along. But when he started talking about the pick picker, I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> But the whole thing was pretty. I could understand it. It wasn't too uh, yeah, out of the norm. I, was, I, know what he, I know exactly what he's talking yeah, about. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know what he's talking about. It's just, uh, especially when JJ Reddick started to like talk about like, oh, you know, that's that that does sound good. But like, see, my defender is gonna be right behind. Like, I I knew I knew instantly. I knew it instantly. And then you obviously talked about how like they showed how um, teams in college they were um, defending it that yeah. way. The way they described it, um, it in the a, tournament yesterday. Yeah, yeah. They was were it, defending it. it. Um, what team was it? Was it P- Purdue? It may have been Purdue. But I, I heard Michigan State. I know Michigan. Like yeah, too. they do that too. So yeah, I mean that's that's great. That's cool. And and, and honestly, people who want to get into the podcast but don't really may not understand. I I really like even though he's he's like complains a lot, but it's more like, it's kind of like satire, but awful coaching. He actually, even though he is like a sad type, but yeah. he be dead serious. The he stuff he said, serious, he, be, yeah. it, it be, he be telling the truth. He tells people. It's like really basic, but it like it's just like fundamentals, and it makes yeah, sense. So yeah. if you don't know ball or X's and O's or what to do on a game or play to play scenario, I think people should watch that. Oh, yeah, that should be funny, too. Yeah. Like, um, LeBron also talked about, in this, in this we, we talked about off camera, but the big helping out the um, – so, like, when a guard gets beat mm-hmm. off the dribble and the big will help out the guard in the paint and leave the corner yeah. open, like, LeBron was like, oh, like, why why you keep doing it? Like, just stay, stay, worry about the corner because sometimes the guard's not even really beat. Yeah. Like, he's still there, so why are you, like... Like why are you just all of a sudden? Oh yeah, I'm gonna leave the corner guy open, and then the corner guy is open, and they and they make the shot. Like yesterday, it was um Kentucky. Yep. Same thing happened. I don't know if it, I don't know if it was DJ Wagner or what, but like whoever it was, stay with the corner guy. Don't don't just oh I, I'm a I'm gonna be I'm gonna help side defense, make sure that the guy doesn't get in the paint. Bro, the dude is still right. Your teammate is still right there. Why are you just? I'm gonna just help out. Like it just makes no sense to me. Like they do this all the time. It's it's like I'm watching. Um, I remember playing 2K back in the day, and it would be like the the CPU would just give up an open three. Yeah, they would just randomly help. I'm like, why are you helping? Right That's there? the exact same. It's literally the exact same two. Uh, same thing. Just bad IQ. Yeah. From the CPU, but now, but it's reality this time. I guess 2K, they did a good job of uh, mimicking. 
real life because that that happens all the time, even though it's and just would, a dumb read. Think with the game being the way it is now, with so much importance on three point offense. You would think give, not giving up an open three would be the highest of importance on the defense, but alas, here we are. That's why March Madness is, is what it is. That's why it's really good because it's a lot of bad IQ. Guys don't really know the team's tendencies. It's it's a, it's a, it's a short time. It's yeah. a short time. You get like one, yeah, one, one day, day off, and that's about it. You don't have enough time to really scout and to game really plan and game plan and study film. And so that's why that's why March Madness is what it is. It's a lot of bad IQs, a lot of bad reads. But, hey, high ratings, a lot of upsets, and that's really it. It's not like college football where you get a week. Yeah. That's why college football is supreme. <laughs> but yeah, man, the the podcast was great, and uh, I hope I hope he continues to uh, do this for the for, to the future. Tap into the episode. Yeah, bro, it's only like forty something minutes. Oh. It's not too long. Yeah, so definitely want to check that out. All right, let's go to the next topic. I want to talk about. I want to talk about. Uh, so the NFL draft, it's getting closer and closer and closer. <sighs> I want to ask you this. Month and two days. Yes, man. It's gonna be it's gonna be gonna be so good. I wanna ask you this. Like as as somebody that has heard this term these terms before, draft for need, draft for the best player. Where are you on that? Do you believe in drafting for need or do you believe the philosophy just draft the best player? I truthfully, de- I think where you are in the draft and what kind of roster you have should determine mm-hmm. your draft strategy. Most of the time, I'm team draft the best player yeah. because at the end of the day, you draft for need. Sometimes you could you pass up on a better prospect, and when instead of going BPA, you get a guy that you probably really don't need, but he could turn out to be an All Pro player. So like, I, I'm I'm. It's, so yeah, that's why I'm at with it. That's why I'm like, for the Cowboys at 24, if there's a tackle there, say like Graham Barton or Jordan Morgan or something like that, someone like that there. A Mary was an Amarius Mims or something yeah, like Amarius that. Yeah, Amarius Mims or A. D. Mitchell, and I'm just like, I know we need a tackle, <laughs> but A. D. Mitchell could be something special. Yeah, he could be like a high, really high end wide receiver too. Could really change the offense. We could we could, we could find someone to play. Like you can mm-hmm. you can mitigate a little pressure. You can't create separation with no sorry wide receiver. Mm-hmm. And you love and remember Michael Gallup. He was your exactly. wide receiver three. So it's like do you he really? Gone. And he wasn't good. He was no, trash. He was terrible. I I told you. Hey, I told Jaylen you. Jalen Tober. He ain't ready yet. So oh he hell no, nah. hell no. So yeah, I'm, so th- it really depends. I, I'm mostly best player available. You look at all these teams that draft for need year after year, and they're like, well, they don't produce no really. They don't produce no dudes. Like look at the the Raiders. They draft for need all the time, and they stink. But versus the Ravens, they're like, listen, we got this, but we still gonna get this guy anyway. Mm-hmm. They got Cal Hamilton. Yeah. They got um um, and like like the Jets, they they draft pretty much BPA as far as I'm concerned. Mm-hmm, they like do. like they could have took a lineman or something last year, but they took Will McDonald. Yeah, because cause all the great all the really good linemen were gone. So they're yeah. like, man, let's just go best player Exa- available. Exactly. Exactly. So that's where I'm at with it. And like BPA and like versus a top ten pick. They see once you get to like the top ten territory, now we go from BPA to Floor or ceiling. Yeah, 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 I agree. I agree. And so that's a whole different discussion. I, I, I mean, everybody knows I'm floor guy. Floor guy. But yeah, yeah, but yeah so I'm going. I'm BPA. I'm team BPA for the mm. most part. See, see me. I unless agree. unless the guy you need a need in is at the top of the draft. Like if he's like two, three, in his position group for the draft, then I could be like, okay. Yeah, justifiable. Exactly. Like like for instance, you need like a tight end. And dudes like tight end one. Yeah. Like if Brock Bowers on the board, you need a tight end. You better take Brock Bowers. Yeah. But if Quentin Johnston is on the board, you need wide receiver. Hell uh, no. Nope. <laughs> nope. I'm good. Yeah, it's like, I'm good. Uh, we could we could we could trade back and get some. We could yeah. trade back and get some. That's another thing. Trading down. It's like 
a lot of teams, you would think a lot of teams would trade down more when their board gets washed out, but it seems like they get pressured and they're like, okay, we need to get somebody. Because they're scared. Because they're scared that oh, this player, like this position, if we trade down, we're not going to get what we want. We're not going to get the value that we want. So let's just let's just um. Stay draft the player, draft the dude. We overdraft him. Really, yeah, overdraft the guy. We're not really, we don't really believe. I'm like, man, trade the pick. Trade down. Trade down. Get a set another. Get another second. Like, come on now. And, and see, this is this that's is when the real draft. Yeah. Anybody could draft in the first round, but once you get to the second and third day two pick, that's when the real teams that know how to draft really show up. This is the draft isn't yeah. one on day one. Yeah, this is my problem with the Packers. They they do they just draft for need. Because these past few years, like in the first round specifically, didn't y'all draft Van Ness last year? Yeah, and he's been. I mean, we still got. He still has time, but he hasn't like really exploded that much. He made like a couple plays against the Bears, but he hasn't really made a whole lot of impact. And the one year I remember, we drafted a corner, right? And that corner, I remember Bear everybody Stokes. was clowning. Yeah, everybody was clowning. It's like you drafted him this early. And I'm thinking to myself, like, yo, we could have had this, 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 receiver. You drive Eric Stokes. I get it. We need a corner. But come on now. Like, that pick specifically, get the value for that pick. Don't overdraft. And I am team best player available. And think about it. When you think about it like this, say if you do draft a really good guy that can replace a starter on your team, they go to, and the starter goes to another team when it's time for get, to pay him some money. You get a comp pick yeah, in return. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's not like it's like a lose lose. Mm-hmm. You get a better player and you get a comp pick. I don't mm-hmm. understand. Mm-hmm. And, and see, see, the thing is, is that you can never have too many um, players in the same position. Like, okay, like depth positions like edge rushers and corners. Guys and, get hurt all the time. And linemen, like you can't have they were receivers. Yeah, g- even running backs. Like g- you can't have too many of those. Unless it's a quarterback. Unless it's a quarterback, quarterback, that's different. a different that's a different story. But regardless, like guys get hurt all the time. You're gonna need to fill that need. You're gonna need to fill that position. So it's like, why why would you not go best player available? Unless you're in the top ten, because like, then that's a different story. But you gotta go best player available at the end of the day. Like, like if you have three good receivers, get a fourth one. Who cares? That's why I like what the Vikings and and uh, Seattle did. They Seattle they had DK and Tyler Lockett. They said we're gonna get JSN anyway. Uh, they they uh, Vikings said we got the best wide receiver in the league. We still gonna get Jordan Addison. Mm-hmm. So I mean that's that's what you're supposed to do. Yeah man, it should just, that's just that's just the way it should be, man. A lot of these teams they, they just don't think that way. They just think oh we we need to get a need. We need to get this need. But dude, if you have if you're like at a certain pick and there's a guy that's like immensely talented, why not? Just draft that player and worry and, and worry about the need and later. Most teams aren't in a position to draft for need because they're not competing for anything. Like the Chiefs, they could get away with drafting for need because, well, they they perennial uh, AFC championship attendees and all of that. Mm-hmm. They can afford a draft for need. Like the 49ers can afford a draft for need because they do work in free agency and they just have a really good all around roster. But teams like the Jets and like the Patriots, like, y'all better get the best player on the board. For sure. For sure. Like, yeah. Yeah. Especially this draft. Like, you have tackles, you have wide receivers. Man, you better hey some, take some, advantage. Some few corners out there too. You better, hey man, y'all better. Yeah. What's it with Nate? Nate Wiggins. Yeah. Nate Wiggins. Yeah, from Clemson. He, I remember he he um he did a number on um Xavier Leggett. I saw that. I saw them clips. But yeah, man, like just like that's that's just how I am. I just hate when hate when teams just do that all the time. Like, dude, just just go with the best player. Like if. I remember, um, remember when CD Lamb slipped to you guys. Like that was crazy. I don't know how that happened. CD Lamb, it's just like, bro, just just draft CD Lamb. I don't know what film dudes was watching. I understand Judy because his routes were phenomenal, mm-hmm. but I was like, CD's clearly the best receiver in that draft. I don't know what these teams were thinking. That's why I say teams suck at drafting. They do. They do. They. they it's, it's it's so funny how like every year it's the same stuff. It's like the teams that are always good at drafting. Are gonna be good at drafting, and the teams that aren't good at drafting are always not gonna be good at drafting. Raiders just suck at drafting. That's just how it is. And the Cowboys, for whatever reason, y'all do good in the draft. Because why? Sometimes that shit was kind of a stink. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, Still, time will tell. Time will tell. But previous years, Michael Parsons, C.D. Lamb, Trayvon Diggs. Yeah. Y'all did good. Y'all did really good. Um, 
another thing when it comes to the draft, so like obviously Jaden Daniels and Drake May, there's there's just continuous conversation about those two guys as prospects. I'm trying to turn on Jaden Daniels, say he can't throw on the run and stuff. This it's becoming very weird. People are just bored at this point. Each week it's just something new. Yeah. It's oh Jaden Daniels, he's clear number one or he's clear number two. And the next week it's like. Are y'all crazy? Like, Drake May is clearly better than Jaden Daniels. At the end of the day, it does not matter where they get drafted. It's the team that they get drafted to. And what is around them? Whoever gets drafted to the Commanders is starting day one. Marcus Mariota is not good. Marcus Mariota is a QB3 at best. And see, that's the problem. That's another thing. Teams that just can never get the quarterback right do shit like that they they get they 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 get a guy in free agency that's clearly not a backup is a QB3 at best and they say oh he's going to compete with the with the QB coming out no he is not so the here so here's the thing if you're the commanders if you're a fan of the commanders think about this the QB you draft will have to play day one because Marcus Mariota stinks. Who do you believe is ready to start day one for the commanders? It's Jaden Daniels. Jaden yeah. Daniels is he's the more pro ready prospect. It's not about who's more talented. It's about who fits the team and who could start right away. It's Jaden Daniels. He's more fundamentally sound. He gets the ball out quick. You could tell he reads the defense pretty well. And he's pretty fast. He's a really good runner. The only thing he doesn't do, he's not, he doesn't slide, like we all know. And he's pretty skinny. And he's very frail. He's very skinny. But he's 6'3. He could always get bigger. So who do you believe can start day one for your team? I believe it's Jaden Daniels. Uh yeah. Um, from a source, I'm not going to say who the source is. Uh, he said he wouldn't be surprised if the commanders go Jaden Daniels at five. I mean, at two. You Drake made you have to sit him down. I don't think it so. doesn't. You really? You really? I I understand. Like, listen, I, I understand. Don't, first of all, I don't believe in sitting down top really? five QB. You really? You really think? No. What? Even if the team stinks. No, just throw him out there. What? You're crazy. So Bryce Young, so it was cool that the Panthers started Bryce Young year one. No, it was stupid that they draft they traded up to draft him in the first place. But you but you, that wasn't a contending roster. Okay, but you just said that I'm all for throwing him out there. But they did that for Bryce Young and he and he struggled. And it wasn't because of his, it wasn't his fault, it was exactly. because of the roster. But see the thing is when you throw a QB out there and they develop bad tendencies. Because they're afraid, oh, because their line stinks. So they're going to have these tendencies that because of the roster around them, like, for instance, Bryce Young, he's so scared that, oh, the line is not going to be able to hold up that he throws the ball too soon, he holds the ball too long. But the thing like, is, I didn't see that with Bryce Young last what year. What did you see from Bryce Young? I saw Bryce Young stay in and deliver throws plenty of times in that pocket. Okay. I don't think Bryce Young, uh, Zach Wilson, on the other hand, that's a different story. Uh, Bryce Young, I don't think he has those problems. You don't think he has those problems? No. Okay. Well, I think he'll be better this, uh, this upcoming. I season. do. I do think too because they they have they have a new head coach. I believe uh, Dave Canales. He's he's really good when it comes to offense, and I do think they they did got those two guards. They got those two guards, so that's going to really help him out. And second round, they're going to have to really. They're gonna have to really do good when it comes to drafting in the second round. Like they're gonna have to get a receiver. They better get a receiver. They have to. And Mingo is trash. Yeah, Mingo is trash. And Adam Thielen is old. Did they sign? Who wide receiver did they sign? They traded for Deontay Johnson, which oh, is yeah. pretty good. Yeah. I mean, he's a route run yeah. route runner, so that's gonna be good. But they're gonna have to draft a receiver in the second round. He better and he better. He better hit. Maybe. Xavier Leggett. Yeah, Xavier Leggett. But then they but they tried that with Jonathan Mingo, where it's like the guy, the talented than guy. Mingo. He, oh, yeah, he's, he's way better than – oh, yeah, he's way better than Mingo. <laughs> way better than Mingo. But they better not drive the guy like Troy Franklin. They both they both 
went to South Carolina, didn't they? Who? Didn't Mingo play South Mingo, Carolina? Mingo went to... Um, Who did he go to? Did he go to Texas? He went to uh, Old Miss. Oh, he did? Oh, yeah. yeah, he did go to Old He went to Old Miss, Miss. Yeah. y'all. Yeah, man, but... I mean, yeah, like I said, um, yeah, just throw him out there. If you think if you think this guy's going to get rattled because the team isn't all that good, you shouldn't draft him in the top no. in, with the top 5 pick. <laughs> no, man. No. Nah. The, the the team stinks. If the O-line stinks, no. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. You get a veteran savvy quarterback and you have them play to start. And then next year when the team is better, when he has talent around him, that's when you put him out there. But no, don't, no, don't do that. Don't do that. Get a guy like Sam Darnold, have him start the entire year, and then next year, you put the rookie QB out there. Let him learn. Let him sit. What's wrong? Bro, the formula him, is you there. You got to give him in game reps. The formula is there. We've seen it. We've seen what works. How many times? What you mean, how many times? Many times. Patrick Mahomes, Jordan Love, Aaron Rodgers. Um, who else? Just just recently, um, but yeah, those are just the normal names. Uh, even Justin Herbert didn't start day one. Now he eventually played his rookie season, but he didn't start out. Was Philip Rivers still on the team? No, he wasn't no, on he was, the team. He was on the Colts by then. Yeah, he was oh, on okay. the Colts by then. He might. Yeah, he was definitely on the Colts by then. But still, like man, just. Don't don't do it, bro. Don't make that mistake. So, so. Unless the team is ready made, unless unless they're like the Vikings, where there's like talent all over the place. You have the receivers, you have the old line. Unless you unless you have something like that, do not put your quarterback in a predicament like that. That's what happened to Justin Fields. They screwed him they screwed him over because they put him in a bad situation. The coaching was on the coaching was on the hot seat. The personnel was trash, the old line was trash. They were trying to change his fun, his mechanics, his fundamentals, and everything like that. And he was over, he was overthinking everything. That's the problem. Jets as well with Zach Wilson. Trevor, they almost Zach screwed. Just wasn't that good. They almost screwed. They almost screwed. Uh, Trevor Lawrence. Get, day one, he started day one. And if Irvin Meyer, Irvin Meyer was still a coach, Trevor Lawrence would have been in the same situation as Justin Fields. Yeah. So. Coaching, man, this stuff matters. It it really matters. There's, I'm telling you, there's not many C.J. Strouds. That that was a dime a dozen. That was once every blue moon. I'm telling you, don't start your QB day one unless you have the roster taken care of. Unless the roster is set, do not start your rookie QB day one. Sit the rookie QB. I'm so, I, just, I don't believe in wasting a top five pick and keeping him on the bench. You're insane. What what's wrong with him for one year? If you have a rookie, if you have a coach that is under contract for like three, four years, for four or five years, they have time. But I think you you need the live reps. You will just next year. Nah, you crazy? Because Sam Dar- Sam Howell was still garbage, even though he sat that one year. Fourth round pick. A fourth round pick. So why can't the first round pick just go out there and play? No, no. I say play him. I don't care. It's just it doesn't work a lot. It just doesn't work a lot, man. They don't draft the dude day one. If you think he can't play day one, they don't draft him. I'm... Patrick Mahomes sat for a year. What's the problem? What's the problem with that? Well, that's because Pat Mahomes, like people were saying, he was like real raw coming out and he couldn't read defenses and stuff like that. They saying that about Drake May. Drake May, he he's raw, but like I don't think he's like that bad to where he can't play day one. Especially on the commanders. At least they have receivers. They have two receivers. That's better than they have no tight end. Some other teams they drafting have, the They top have no line. tight end. O line is trash. Cliff Kingsbury, we saw his track record with the Cardinals. You really trust the commanders. You really trust Drake May can succeed with the commanders. It's a possibility. Brian Johnson is the passing game coordinator. I mean, Jalen Hurts turned out decent somewhat. 
He was a QB coach. That's entirely different. You know, we already talked about this. He trying to see. He has no argument. He has no argument. People. He knows damn well. Sit the quarterback. Don't put him in harm's way until the next year when you have more talent on the roster. That's just what you should do. That's that's like just putting him in harm's way that early just makes no sense. Unless the roster is constructed. Then that's a coaching issue. Man. Yeah, the roster could be trash, but you you still can uh, set it up for your QB to get easy reads, easy looks. Maybe not try to make these long developing routes to where he's holding a ball in a pocket for three seconds in order to make a re- wait for somebody to get open. So now, now we see. See, this is the, now we go from a scheme. This is a scheme and coach issue. Because if you know your team can't block, you know your receivers can get no separation. What is the? What are you scheming up to help your quarterback? Mm. Let me let me let me say this though. Like, how come there's so many failures, first round quarterback failures? You know, like they I starting said. early. They starting. They starting out from the jump, and. Oh, it's just so many misses. Like I said, it's a scheme and coaching issue. Look at the teams they got drafted to. The Jets was a no favorable situation for Zach Wilson. Oh, first of all, he shouldn't have even been drafted that high. <laughs> but let's start there. But 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 you're like, hey, I'm team. Throw him out there. Put him in the fire. And he got burnt because the coaching and, and roster was trash. So. Exactly. So why throw them out there? I'm, I'm expecting the coaches to do their daggone oh job and put the players in the better in the best position possible. You can't think that the coaches are going to do the job. You, th- you see, you're thinking about this from a, f- a fan perspective. You got to think about this from a team perspective. A team perspective. You got to expect the best out of your staff. If the, if the staff can't bring out the best in your players, then pr- you should just fire them. At this point. Do you believe in the commander's staff? I don't think they're as bad as people. I don't, I don't, I I don't believe in B. them. I don't believe in the commander's staff. And we're going to get to grading the, the coat. We're going to get to grading the um, the free agency for the commanders, but I don't believe in their staff at all. So, Well, I don't have a. Maybe I am looking at it from a fan point of view, but at the same time, like that's, that's just me. If I don't believe in the coaching staff of the commanders, then – I don't think it would be a good idea to draft Drake May it, because they're going to start him day one, and I don't think Drake May is ready to play day one. But Jaden Daniels is. I do. I think he's. I think he's more ready now. I don't think the gap is that big. Though. I don't think it's that big either. But I do think that I do think from a if you're looking at number one, Jaden Daniels started more games, and his film looks a lot better than. A Drake May. Now you but, can now you can say Drake May. The personnel he didn't have the same personnel as a Jaden Daniels. I'll say that yeah. the O line wasn't as good. I, bro, I watched a lot of Drake May games. I know the the offensive coordinator wasn't the greatest, but at the same time, I also hear well there are moments where they were able to block. The receivers were able to separate. He just wasn't able to read the defense. Who does that sound like? Justin well, Fields. Well, I know Cliff Kingsbury said it's not going to be an air raid offense. In air raid offenses, you really don't like have to read the defense much in those type of schemes. But he said it's not going to be like that. So, I don't know. I don't know, man. You know these coaches be lying. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Who knows? Who knows? But I think I – think the way I see it, though, if if Drake Bay is coming from a system where he was able to put up solid numbers, even with the lack of team building around him, it wouldn't be far-fetched to say, well, he could probably make some shake in a similar situation in the league. Granted, while everyone is better at the next level, just floor to floor, yeah, yeah. but he's also playing with NFL players. So. Yeah, I, I like I- – Again, I like Drake May as a prospect more than Jaden Daniels. You like Jaden Daniels more as a prospect than Drake May. But at the end of the day, it, it comes down where you're drafted at, not not when you're drafted, where you're drafted, what team you're drafted to. And I think Drake May going to the Patriots. 
I think any of them sitting. going to the Patriots is cook food. Really, you think you really think that? I think he. I think the Patriots might sit him, potentially. While with the Commanders, I'm not so sure they're gonna sit him. I think they're gonna play him day one. I don't want that to happen to him. So, that's just my way of thinking. And yeah, let's go to the next topic. Um, I want to grade the Commanders free agency. Yay! More hate comments. Woohoo! <laughs> Um, I don't got no harsh grade for him. Uh, I, may, I may hurt some feelings, what I say, but it's not going to be like a harsh grade. So, obviously, the notable names is going to be Zach Ertz. It's going to be <laughs> Bobby Wagner, <laughs> Austin Eckler, <laughs> Tyler Biotish, um, Brandon McManus. I mean, he's a solid he's kicker. No, he's, he's, he wasn't good. Oh, he's not good anymore? He used to be good. I guess kickers... Shelf life is just very... Trust good teams don't let go of good kickers. I tell you that <laughs> Marcus Mariota, who's we already talked about, is bad. Dante Fowler, nice depth piece, yes, but he is, he is. not a guy you want to start. They re-signed Jeremy Reeves, who I don't even know if he's good or not. He's, he, he, I think he made the Pro Bowl special team. So he's special, special teams. Team. <laughs> hey, uh, trust me, you need special teams. You do, you do, you do. I give you that. Uh, they just signed cornerback James Pierre. I don't know who that is. And then this other guy, I don't even want. I don't no, even, Benogany, yeah. Former Cowboy. Uh, yeah. That's the only reason I know how to pronounce that. Yeah. Michael Davis, don't know who that Jeremy is. Jeremy Chin. Jeremy Chin, he he's just not here. Frankie Louvu, like okay. I like Frankie Louvu. I want okay. him on the Cowboys. Um, they released Logan Thomas. They released Charles Good. Leno, Good. Nick Gates. Good. Oh my goodness, Nick Gates was horrible. What would what would you grade these transitions, transactions um, so far? What I like what they did, what the Commanders did, they had a lot of money, but they just wasn't throwing out money at these free agents just willy nilly. I like that they built – I think they're establishing raising the floor of the team instead of trying to go out and spend big money to get boom players and try to overcompensate for or make the roster top-heavy. So I like that the fact that they went more they, – they, they, in my opinion, they got a bunch of jags at this point. It's a lot of depth. Yeah, it's a lot depth of depth pieces. or jag guys, which is, it's not a bad thing. Like you got you to gotta build a floor and establish a culture and what, you, what type of team you want to be. And like I said, they're not expected to win anything. They may win six, seven games. That's the best. That's that's probably the best. Yeah, <laughs> best so like six, case seven scenario. games. I mean, I mean, with the new coaching staff and new roster and the new QB. I mean, that's not that's not bad. And I mean, honestly, I give I give these moves about. I'm gonna give them the same moves as same grade as I did the coaches. I'm gonna just give them a B. A B. Yeah, I, I think they're solid. They they got good players. They ain't just signed. With, now Austin Eckler, uh, yeah, he he's not very good. But you he, know he's never had a thousand yards. Well, he had a thousand scrimmage yards. Yeah, a thousand but scrimmage not, yards, but not no yeah, thousand yeah, rushing yards. Yeah, I don't think they. I don't think they need him. I don't think they're gonna have him like run a lot. Like, mm-hmm. I think they're still gonna give the ball all to uh, um, what's his name? The running back. Brian Robinson? Yeah, Brian Robinson. So I think they pretty much probably going to use Eckler Moore's pass game as a safety net for the Q, whatever QB they draft. So, yeah, I mean, I don't – Zach Ertz, he's washed. I don't, I'm don't. i not too sure about that. Yeah, they don't have to drop the tight end. Like, Biotish, I like that, even though he's not – I'm not a big fan of Biotish, but he, he's better than what they <laughs> used to have. Uh, Bobby Wagner, he's a good vet guy. Good vet. He's going to be the captain on yeah, that probably. team. And Fowler, he's a good rotational. Dorrance Armstrong, good rotational guy. If they can find a way to utilize Jeremy Chin's speed and height, they, you know what? They may put Jeremy Chin in that J. Ron Curse role mm-hmm. that Dan Quinn used to have. But I don't know how good Chin can cover. At least J. J. Ron could cover. But I don't know about Jeremy Chin's cover skills. Uh, Frankie Louvre, I like him. He was he was one of the few bright players on that uh, Panthers team last year um i think that's about it yeah that's pretty much i mean again it's it's all going to boil down to the to the draft yeah if they, they, got, they got like 11 10 11 picks or this, something like this this is their most important draft by far in the in the dan quinn regime because off rip if you don't knock it out the part with a quarterback all these moves mean nothing you can get a all pro tackle 
an all pro corner, but if you don't knock knock it out the part with the quarterback, it's just all for nothing. And so th- this draft right here, they need to do their due diligence. Hopefully, the scouting report uh, department is doing their job and really making it a point to go out there and to do their research on these guys because oh my gosh, this is really a this this off is really about getting depth guys not the most talented there there is a plan i see the plan it's not a, in the past they just oh we're gonna we're gonna go out and get Deshaun jackson and give him all this money we're gonna trade for um josh norman and give him all this money like that that's what they used to do the short term sort of oh we're gonna get the big name guy and he's gonna change life for us like this is more so I'm going to take it a step at a time. You see, because they, they're, they're, they're not operating from a state of delusion because they don't, they don't believe that they're going to compete the first year, maybe not even the second year of the regime. But they know we're going to build the guys to establish the coach so when we finally get the dudes in, it's more of a seamless transition and then we can hit the ground running. Yeah. Back in the Ronald, Ron Rivera regime, he thought they was really a competing team year after year, and we was looking at the roster like, are you drunk? <laughs> so, like, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a complete, it's a complete, so listen, if I was a Commanders fan, thank God I'm not, with all respect, even I'm a Cowboys fan, we ain't doing much better over here, but if I was a Commanders fan, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be mad at these moves. I'd be skeptical because of, you know, PTSD and all that, but, yeah. but as far as like the moves, and the co- I wouldn't be mad, I'd just have to, I'd be somewhat excited. I... I'm, if I was still a fan, I would be like, let me wait until the draft. Let me see what they now, do now in the draft. Really, the draft really going to see how. That's really the free agency. If they hit in the draft, they have, I think, 10, 11. If they can hit at least like five, five picks. Yeah, five picks they, if they can hit five picks, that's a yeah, home if run. If they can get five starters from this draft, yeah. That's what they need. Quarterback, they need to do well. If they can get another really solid tight end. They need They need a tight end. They need a tight end. They need an O-line. They could use another receiver. Like, like Dotson is okay. He's cool, but I'm still not all the way there with Dotson. Terry McLaurin's getting up there in age. So you may need to get a receiver. They need, like, a separation. Honestly, they need everything. <laughs> they need everything, bro. Like, there's not – shoot, they could use another pass rusher. They could, yeah, use, they could use another tack. Like, they could use another – Defensive tackle, they could use any position on O line. Seriously. Oh yeah, definitely. Oh my god, definitely O line. Any pick they do after the quarterback, it's a possibility I mean, though. They have a lot of picks. Are are they a trade up back into the first candidate? I would. I would for sure. For this, for this draft specifically, you're trying to. This is the new regime. You're starting from ground one. You have to set the tone. There needs to be the quarterback and then another person that you look to and you're like, these are the guys of the future. Like what the Texans did last year, Will Anderson and with C.J. Stroud, like these are the two cornerstone guys that we're going to build around for the future. Commanders should do the same thing. Yep. Maybe not Maybe not go crazy yeah, like, uh, like the Texans. Like, and Maybe like trade back into the 20s. Or yeah, in the 20s, like yeah. I would – if you're going to trade back, if you're going to go to the 20s, man, you there has to be like a lineman. Receiver. There has to be a lineman, lineman receiver. Yeah. Has to be. Or, or maybe, a corner. maybe Nate Wiggins if he slips. I don't think Nate Wiggins going that high. You don't think he's going that high? You think he's going to slip in second? I think he, yeah, I think he might be. You don't think? I think so I think you, the he's not QB? He's not CB1? Is, is Terry and Arnold, uh, um, what's that other? Where what school did he go to? Did he go to Clemson? That's Nate Wiggins went to Clemson. Okay, no, not Nate Wiggins. Uh, you talking about um the, that that white that white boy? No, to Cooper DeGene, he is in the, like that top five for most uh, scouts and stuff like that. But um, obviously got Kool Aid. Kool Aid, yeah. Uh, he, uh, it's a that's my guy. I can't remember his name. What school did he go to? Hmm. I can't. Remember. I got. I got to rewatch. I know. Movies. I know. There was a corner in Michigan. People were talking about as well. Yeah, him. Him. I don't know. Like it's another dude. What pro? 
man, I can't. I'm about to look up cornerback prospects. Yeah, you probably have to. But regardless, if there's if there's receiver, lineman, corner, yeah, they they have to be foundational pieces. That's that's just the way I'm looking at it. And um, yeah, man, the Commanders. I mean, it's gonna be a slow. Quinion Mitchell. That's that's Quinion that's Mitchell. My, he's my yeah. CB one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Cooper DeGene, You got uh, Quinion Mitchell. Oh, Nate Wiggins, yeah, he is ranked high. At, uh, Over Terry and Arnold, I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't know about that. Then you got Kool-Aid, you got, yeah. I don't know who TJ Tamp is. I'm not familiar with Nah, me either, yeah. I don't know who in these, any of these people is. It's not a It's not a really like, heavy. You got like four or five guys, and then after that, it's like good, good luck. Yeah. It's, it's not really heavy corner draft, so. Like I said, they, they could trade back up into the. I would. So I would. You got I would. Ten picks, man. What? Yeah, I would trade for sure. Back up. Yeah, because um, in this day and age, the way that your their roster, the structure, you need to get as much talent as you can. And and it's not like and it's not like, if you draft another receiver, it's gonna hurt you because, bro, you need every every position on your team needs to be filled. You need to upgrade every position. So it's not like oh oh my god, we got another receiver. And, and, I mean, Terry's getting older, and he's not as good as he, I mean, he's still good, don't get me wrong, but the consistency is just not as much as it was two years ago, so, like, so what? All right. I uh, do want to yeah. say one thing, and it's about the Carolina Panthers. Um, I understand last year you saw a guy, Bryce Young, you you saw him, you wanted him, like, you really liked him, you, you traded up to get mm-hmm. him. Big mistake. Big, big mistake. Mm. You should have stayed put, toughed it out, because now you should have just toughed it out, and whatever happened, happened, and you missed out on a generational QB because of it. Could have just stayed down for one year. Yeah, the owners and the people and the fans probably wouldn't have been happy, but shoot, they wasn't happy regardless, and you had the QB. Could have just stayed down, drafted the dudes to help build the roster, maybe, maybe went line in a draft, and then waited till this year and got Caleb Williams. Because now you don't have a pick. You don't have a pick this year, the nope, first round. Nope, no, they don't. And then you also messed up by not trading Brian Burns for those two first the Rams were offering you. Stupid. And he left for what? A, 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 a second. A second? And something else, maybe mm. a fifth. Hmm. So David Tepper and company, y'all have royally mismanaged these past two seasons. Absolutely. And if I'm a Panthers fan, I'm very upset. Because although I may like Bryce Young, but it's Caleb Williams. It's different. He's he's different. He would have won. And we would have had a different player drafted first round that could have helped helped them out. And and the there was already like people were saying that next year this year's draft was gonna be better than Last year's draft. Yeah. So, for them to just, oh, we're going to trade up anyway, just makes no Especially sense. Especially the Bryce Young situation, it, it was a conflict because the head coach, they didn't, he wanted C.J. Stroud, if I'm correct. Mm-hmm. But the management, they they loved Bryce Young so much, and now you got a QB that half the fan base is, be like, give him more time, half the fan base says he stinks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you could have just stayed down for that one year. You, 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 the sales would have been down, but a draw like Kaylee Williams would have put butts in seats. I tell you that much. I think they were. I think the owner felt like he was under immense pressure because one, you know, the idea of you you get a a you know a a new head coach and you pair him with a QB, a QB in and the draft. You end up firing him, so. so congratulations. It's just yeah, it, they they fumbled on that one. It, it just wasn't right. QB draft. I mean, the QB draft with CJ and Bryce and Anthony them for Anthony going Richardson. to get the QB that they want. Yeah, but I don't know. Man. I don't that know it was, was just too much. It, you gave up too much. Too much draft capital for a guy that is five nine. I'm sorry, like he has all the talent in the world, but, but he's five nine. He's limited. There's a guy who's better coming out the very next year. Yeah. Way better. He would have been the number one pick oh, in that easy, draft. Easy. So, and I think the Brian Burns thing was just the most egregious 
You give up. Let me tell you, I know we pass rushers are super valuable. But Brian Burns wasn't no Micah Parsons or no uh or or no uh Miles Garrett or TJ Watt. No, nah, no. Nah, two bro. you get two first rounds for a guy like Brian Burns, I'm like, heck yeah, send him through. I'll pack his bags right now. It's just it's just malpractice. It's just malpractice. You, you, you kept him, and he gave you eight and a half sacks. Congratulations. And, and, and like, I love J.C. Horn, but, dude, he's always hurt. You you have to you have to tear this. You have rip to tear this thing. Yeah, rip, it, rip the band-aid. Yeah, man, you got to get. Bro, I need as many picks as possible. This draft for the Panthers, let's look up, let's see they need to focus – I don't care what anybody says. Oh, we need to draft defense. Our defense sucks. Every pick should be offense. Every pick. We'll worry about the defense another year. But this draft should be how can we help Bryce Young? Literally. Every pick should be this pick is for Bryce Young. The Panthers have... Their own second round pick, which is thirty three. They have the Jets, no, the Giants pick second round pick at thirty nine. They have a third rounder, a fourth, two fifths, and a seventh. I'm gonna be real. I'm gonna try to package that Giants second and a third and move up into the first. In the first, who you gonna get a lineman? You gotta get somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah bro. <laughs> you might try to make. You might have to go. Over, I don't know. You gotta get somebody. Every pick, this draft should be offense. Cause Every I don't like. Pick. I don't like the lineman. That, like you may get like a Tyler Guyton in the second. I'm not a big fan of him. He's not. He's kind of raw coming in and having him starting. Mm-hmm. You need to get a Marius Mims. You need to get so, those type of guys. Even a Grand Barton. Grand you can Barton. play him inside. So. They, every pick needs to be offense. Like, there should be no, oh, no excuse. They just, got, they just signed two guards, so they really just need... They need tackles. Yeah, Kim Corner, he's terrible. He's, I don't know what's wrong. I don't think Donovan Smith has signed yet. I know he's very mid, but he's better than what they have. I don't know who they right tackle is. All I know is, is that the Panthers just go offense, forget the defense. Well, shoot, now they need a pass rush because they got rid of Brian Burns. Forget the defense. Protect Bryce Young and get him the receivers that can separate. We can worry about the defense the next year. This is all about helping Bryce Young. And helping Bryce Young is getting him offense, getting him weapons, getting him guys that can protect him. And I'm telling you, it would be malpractice to this draft, focus, giving like three picks in the third, second round, on defense, that would be malpractice. You have to go offense. If they're not going to trade the second round pick, I'm going receiver again, or I'm going tight end, or I'm going lineman. Like those are the th- those are the positions I'm going to. I'm not going corner. I'm not going pass rush. Screw that. Screw that. We going man. We going offense, bro. Like Bryce Young deserves that. He just and this is the perfect draft, bro. If there is one draft where you do not need to draft a first round receiver, it's this draft. True. They are very fortunate that they don't have a first round pick and they can actually get relatively good value in the second round for some wide receivers. Even last year there was good value in the second round, but not like this. True. Like there are receivers that are gonna slip in the second round that I would grade higher than Quentin Johnston. Oh yeah. Like Quentin Johnson and Dress Draft, he would go in a third. Seriously, yeah, he would, he would, he Xavier would. Leggett is better than him. Um, AD Mitchell is better, AD Mitchell is better than him. Freaking um, Marvin Harrison, Malik Davis, Brian obviously, Thomas. man, that man, we already know, we already know about those dudes. Um, I may even put Lad McConkey over. Lad McConkey better than him, way better than him. Like when I he might just, put Keon Coleman. Keon over Coleman is better. It's definitely better. Like, come on now, it's not even a question. He's better than him. Like, there's so many receivers better than him, bro. And you can get them in the Shoot, second is, round. Uh, is Xavier Worthy better than him? Yes, he's he's better than him. He's he's definitely better than him. Like, bro, bro. Seriously, like it's it's not even a question. Like you can, I'm not, I'm not gonna say Troy Franklin better than him or Tez Walker's better than him, but dog, oh, what about that receiver for Michigan? You talking about Roman Wilson? Yeah. I think he's probably he probably better than him too. Mm. He's probably better than him too. We all know Roman. The dude from UCF. Uh uh Troy. 
Is his name? Nah, 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 nah. It's is Jacob it? something. I forgot his name. He's from UCF. He's probably better than him. Like, there's so many is receivers his better than him. Baker? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, bro. He's better than him. Javon Baker? Is that his name? Yeah, yeah Javon, Javon Baker. Baker yeah. I, I, Malachi I, I, Corley? Like, there's, bro, all these receivers <laughs> are better than Quentin Johnson. And, I, and this is not revisionist history. Like, this is legit. I think these receivers, if they came out last year's draft, should go higher than Quentin Johnston. Mm. But that's 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 what the Panthers have. That's how fortunate they have it this year. But we'll see how things go. I, I would just go straight offense. That's just me. All right. I'm going to have to see what the roster looks like. Oh, well. That defense, I mean, if, they, if J.C. Horn can't stay healthy, I can't bank on. I would him. trade him. I would legit trade him. He'd probably go for like a fourth, but I would still trade him. I think you'd get a third. Third, you think, you think maybe even a second. You think he would you you know um Sneed went for a third and some and Well that's because you gotta pay him. You gotta pay him, but what, 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 um he uh horn, horn 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 he gonna he gonna ask for money pretty soon. But you don't gotta pay him as much you gotta pay Sneed. That is true. But he still, hey, if he has one great year, I mean, if he stays healthy one year, we already know he's going to be really good. I mean, ugh, you're going to have to pay him eventually. All right, let's go to the final topic. I want to talk about the Nuggets. I want to talk about who is the biggest threat to a Nuggets 3P, 3P to a repeat back-to-back champion. Because I say this because the Nuggets are just the clear favorite. There's not another team that I look to and I say, oh, yeah, they're, like, on their level. In your opinion, who can threaten the Nuggets? See, I'm looking around the league, looking at the Western Conference specifically, and who I think will threaten the Nuggets the most? The injured list. Because I'm looking at these teams, I'm just not seeing it. I think there's a couple teams that can make it a little tough on them, like the Timberwolves. The Timberwolves would be, like, my number one, like, solidified. Like, they could give – this series could go seven possibly. But Carl Anthony Towns got hurt. And I know Ant-Man, he's really coming to his own. This is really his opportunity to really take that step Mm -hmm. into being the, the guy. The guy. And one of the best players in the league, but – He's still not there yet. Jokic and them still – it's too much. It's too much. They got too much firepower. And I like – honestly like the way the Mavs match up with them. Strictly because, excuse me, strictly because Kyrie and Luka. and uh, Luca and Derek Lively, when they played them the last time, Derek Lively he had he gave Jokic a little bit of trouble, but yeah, uh, but I think Jamal Murray he shot terrible. I think that game. So yeah, yeah up until the end, he was yeah. actually yeah the fourth quarter he was fantastic. Yeah, but other, he he shot terrible the first yeah. three. So it's still like I'm still I don't I just don't see I don't even the Celtics they, I ain't nobody scared of the Celtics Nuggets versus Celtics it's it's probably Nuggets in five. Because <laughs> I, I don't know, it's, it, they just—it's just too dominant, man. Uh, it's, I'm looking at this team. I'm like, what can you really do? Yeah, pretty much. I look at like the Thunder. Yeah. They're good. Just an experience. They—they have no answer for Jokic. Chet Holmgren, too he's small. Going to get, he's, he's just going to get murdered the whole game. They're too small, bro. Not—not not from like in terms of a size perspective, but in terms of like they don't got no muscle. Like Chet Holmgren, skinny dude, he gonna get bullied in the paint. It's gonna be ugly. I'll say this. So here's the thing. I was thinking you may you may mention the Celtics as the biggest threat, but and if you did, I would have been like, well, I seen them twice now lose to, to the uh, to the Nuggets, and Jokic was having his way against Porzingis, like he was okay. bullying Porzingis. So it's obviously not Celtics. My answer is the Timberwolves. I think the Timberwolves give the Nuggets the best chance i say this about the Timberwolves: they have the size they have the perimeter defense they have a dude they have a guard that can beat jamal murray off the dribble that can make it very difficult for the nuggets perimeter defenders so i believe it's the Timberwolves. my problem with the Timberwolves is that when the game gets tight the game gets close that's where things get very tricky for them. They're, they're not, not They're not the greatest fourth quarter team. They're not the great fourth quarter team. Anthony Edwards is still not there when it comes to closing games. That's why I wouldn't pick them in a seven-game series. But I do think they have the personnel to match up with the Nuggets. It's just about 
executed in the fourth quarter. And I don't think they'll be able to do that. I do like the Timberwolves. They played them really well. They beat them, albeit it was in November. It was like early November. The season just started. But they played them very well. They beat them. And then, obviously, like like last week, I believe, or two weeks ago, they played them again. They didn't have uh, – I don't think they – I don't even think they had they, Gobert. Uh, nope, it, he wasn't playing. And they didn't have Cat. They almost beat them. They lost by three. Lost by three, so – and Anthony Anthony Edwards had a really good game. He had like thirty points, shot the shot the ball, um fifty percent shooting. Pretty well. So they they have a puncher's chance. They really do. But I just think that the Nuggets just their execution in the fourth is just gonna be too much for them. But I think yeah, this the the, the I used to think it was the Clippers, but just just seeing how the Clippers are now, they're old and they, they will never trick you. The Clippers will never trick me. Zubox is just not. He can't. He can't guard. He can't guard Jokic. There's no answer for Jokic. Like it's crazy. It's, he can't guard Jokic, and that and that action, that action from the Nuggets like that, that man is just ridiculous. That system is just unreal. I think the Timberwolves are the best bet to the throne, the Nuggets, and that's including the Celtics. I like the, the the Timberwolves formula. It's just about the coaching, and it's the execution in the fourth quarter. And the reason why the Nuggets will beat the Timberwolves to just have a higher basketball IQ from their two best players, and they're never rattled when the game is close. Like if you're gonna beat the Nuggets. <laughs> he better be like Kyrie and the Mavericks and winning the buzzer off that crazy like left hook shot from the free throw line. Yeah, that, that was crazy. That was one of the most insane to even game winners. Like, I saw that live. I was like, what? <laughs> off the like left some hand? NBA street stuff. Literally, literally, literally. And he made the shot. You can't even, I bet you can't even do that in two K. Like, no, left you shot you missed. off the red, free red, throw line. Contested red release. Kyrie, Kyrie is remarkable. That's, But, yeah, the the Timberwolves are just I, – I really like the Timberwolves. I really do. I think I think they're going to make the West Conference Finals. Even without Cat? Cat is, Cascal, he'll be back? He'll be, he'll back, be back by the playoffs. Okay, he'll be back by the playoffs. I think they're going to make the West Conference Finals. I hope they do. I do. I want. I, I want. I would like to see a Nuggets and Timberwolves Western Conference. I, I mean, I would love to see my Lakers there, but I don't think they're going to do it. So if my yes, Lakers get just, bounced out, it's over for y'all. If my Lakers get bounced out, I will be rooting for the Timberwolves. That's going to be my next team because I because Ant Man's my favorite player, and I would love to see them go up against um, all the top teams. I think the I think the series goes to probably either six or seven. The, the another thing the Timberwolves have, they have a point guard that can initiate the offense. See, with Boston, yeah. they don't have a point guard like Mike Conley. They have Drew, but Drew's not that traditional style of point guard. He is a guy that will defend, you know, play both ends of the floor. He can score a little bit, but he's not a guy that will really get the offense, like trying to make, you know, get an easy shot for Tatum and Brown and everything like that. It's more so one-on-one ball with Boston. And that's 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 going to be their downfall is that they play too much one on one ball and and the Nuggets they look at that and like okay, fine keep playing that one on one ball. So yeah, Timberwolves I like Timberwolves. It's just if they if if Ant if Ant can develop into a really good fourth quarter player then it's going to get dangerous. But I just don't see it. They compare him to MJ. They compare him to Kobe, but he doesn't have that fourth quarter gene just yet. Somebody compared him to 98 Kobe. I I see it. Is it Kobe with the fro? <laughs> Kobe with the fro. I see it. I see it. I, I really do. It's just I think he's a little better than 98 Kobe. He just doesn't have that clutch chain yet. But, yeah. um, Yeah, that'll do it for that topic. Is there anything else you want to discuss before we get out of um, here? Man, it's just how unfortunate things work where – you have a team like the Pelicans who are on a roll. Yeah. And then Brandon Ingram is out for at least two weeks. Two weeks, yeah. But all this could be the opportunity to Zion really step into that number one guy role. They he's, just beat the Miami Heat yesterday, I think. Did it they, was. they washed him. He, washed him. He, well, he just aren't good, uh, in my opinion, mm-hmm. this year. There ain't going to be no eighth seed going to the front. No, y'all are finished. You uh, sure? You sure? Because last year, I mean, they were in a bad predicament. Look at the teams that they beat. Since the All Star break, I, I I understand that, but I'm, I'm just saying, like last year they weren't looking too good. 
this year. Uh, they lost to the Hawks. They lost to the Wizards for crying. In the play in in the play in? Oh, I'm oh I'm talking about oh yeah, last year in the play in they did lose to the Hawks. I, I'm not I'm not putting stock into them, I'm okay, sorry. Okay, all right. You lose to the Pistons. I mean you lose to the uh Wizards in twenty twenty four. That's a bad look. All right, all right. All right. But yeah, uh, I'm not a big fan of the Heat. And they're injured, so like mm-hmm. yeah. They just somehow imagine to get healthy. If they pull it off again, bro, I'm just the league is just fake. I'm just <laughs> fake. I'm just, I'm just talking about the league is it's fake. Fake. But it's yeah, fake. but yeah, man, it's just a shame what happened to the Pelicans. Uh, two, they should be able to stay afloat for two weeks. You think they just the, the Mavs are on their heels? You think you think you think they're uh, they're gonna um, remain out of the plan? I don't know. It's possible. I don't know, man. It really depends who they who they play. Who this? Let's look at this schedule. Yeah, let's look at this schedule. I don't know, man. I mean, this schedule was not. I remember I looked at the schedule like a week ago. It wasn't too bad. They actually have a pretty they decent have schedule. The Thunder Tuesday. Mm. Oh, the Pistons tomorrow. Thunder Tuesday. Bucks Thursday. Celtics Saturday. Mm. Suns Monday. Mm. Magic on the third. Mm. Spurs the fifth. Suns again the seventh, mm. Trailblazers, Kings, Warriors, and Lakers the final game of the season. Mm. That's mm. gonna be tough. Mm. They're forty three and twenty seven. Mavs are two games behind. So was the Suns, and the Kings are three games. Behind. Man, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. I don't know. Nah, but Phoenix, the Suns, that schedule is crazy. They have a tough schedule. Pelicans, Cavs, Timberwolves, Pelicans, again, Clippers, Clippers, Kings, Tim. Oh yeah, <laughs> their schedule is crazy. <laughs> yeah, good luck. Sacramento has. I think that Sacramento doesn't have a too bad of a schedule. Their schedule is pretty solid. I mean, they have Mavericks, Magic, Seventy Sixers, Jazz. These are all winnable games. Clippers, the team, same Knicks. People to I, look out for is the Rockets. This yeah. I, mean, I mean, they winning games. Don't get me wrong, but it's like they, they probably knock off Golden State, but like that's about it. I don't really see much more from. That's what they they think they they think they, they going to take the Warriors spot. Yeah. I tell you what, if you think the Warriors not being in the plan, you done lost your mind. Really? You know how much money that is having Steph in the minute? Come on now, especially with the teams that's in the plan currently. I think we got to be realistic here. Who they lose to last night? They lost to a they bad team. They lost to uh, a team they shouldn't. Oh, they lost to the Pacers. Ah. Uh, then they have the Timberwolves. Then they have the Heat. Then they have the Magic. Good God. Okay, Hornets, Spurs. Okay, all right. Mav- Mavericks, Rockets, Mavericks. All right, Jazz. Lakers, Trailblazers, Pelicans. Yeah. Man, I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't know. They, 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 in, some, they in some trouble. Yeah, I don't, know. I don't know. A lot of these West teams has like a. I know it the is, Lakers it, have a pretty simple schedule. The fact that there's schedule. eight teams in the West with 40 wins and not 30 losses is crazy. Mm. The Lakers schedule is pretty solid, I would say. It's not too bad. But yeah, man, that's. Yeah, uh, we'll see. We'll see, man. I, d- I will say that it is a big loss for them to lose Brandon Ingram for these next two weeks because just because they say he'll you know he'll be out for two weeks and then get reevaluated doesn't mean he's going to be back after two weeks. That is true. What you know how I know that because that happened to the late my my players on the Lakers where they're like oh yeah he's going to be out for uh for like eight weeks and then get reevaluated and then the reevaluation comes and we don't even know. Oh, yeah, he's out for the year, by the way. Yeah, Gabe Vincent. So, like, and Christian Wood. Well, that report we'll Christian wasn't... Christian was out for the season, but more likely out for the season. That report wasn't actually tr- confirmed. Oh, okay. It was speculation. Speculation, NBA Central, like, you know, he <laughs> got it from an account that reported, uh, oh, they're out for the season when it's not confirmed. I heard that Gabe Vincent may come back. At the end of the season, Jared Vanderbilt may come back at the end of the season. 
Christian Wood, we he might be out for the season. He may be out for the season. But those two, the Gabe Vincent and Jared Vanderbilt, there's there's a possibility they can come back before the end of the season. But anywho, um, I got nothing left to say. Yeah, we can we'll we'll close it out on this. Uh, make sure to like, subscribe, comment down below, hit the notification bell, follow the socials as well. We'll see you guys in the next episode of the Courts Have You podcast. And yeah, peace. <laughs> Hey, one time, one time, one time, hey, throw your hands to the sky.